Uh, welcome to this tutorial, or probably more of a discussion, I suppose, uh, from uh, tdcat.com. Uh, today I'm talking about the CRI of bulbs used for photography and uh, whether or not uh, it's important to consider the quality of this uh, and the quality of the, um, the rating that they get, uh, the uh, CRI rating the bulb has and what difference it can make to the um, quality of your images. So CRI is actually a really interesting topic. It's not one I know a massive, not something I know a massive amount about, but Essentially, as I understand it, if you have your electromagnetic spectrum, you've got your visible bit, which is something like this. So there you can see a, um, your, uh, your spectrum from the uh, low frequency and, lo and uh, large wavelength reds up into your sort of blues and, and violets and uh, up at the top, so the high frequency stuff. When you have a bulb depending on the type of bulb and how the light is actually produced from that bulb, the gases that are used or whatever, the spectrum can be partially incomplete. So the amount of energy within the different parts of that spectrum can vary. So your spectrum might look something like this. So this is the spectrum of a sodium vapor lamp. And you see that essentially there are bits missing. There are bits that are very, very dominant and bits that are actually missing. Now the CRI measures how much, how complete your spectrum is. So a CRI of 100% means that it is like sunlight, basically. Sunlight has a CRI of 100%. It produces everything perfectly. Other bulbs, for example, CFL bulbs that you would buy, uh, so energy saver bulbs, basically, that you'd buy to put around your house, have a CRI of roughly 80%. So if you think about that, as you move through the spectrum, there are certain parts that are missing. Now, to the eye, a certain amount missing, you don't really notice it because, you know, you look at stuff and you get used to it and you can you adapt to anything, really. I mean, being under streetlights to a point, you know, is a, is a perfect example of a low CRI bulb because everything's a very obscure color. And you, you might look at a red car and think, mm, this doesn't really look red in this light. And that's because the bulbs are not producing the full range of colors of the visible spectrum. That's how I understand CRI. And my question today is how important is it when, con when considering uh, taking pictures with, uh, with bulbs and uh, studio bulbs and that sort of thing. So I thought I'd do a really, really basic experiment. All I did, I took two pictures, one with tungsten bulbs. And the benefit with tungsten is that it's essentially just a burning filament. So a burning filament produces, it is it's 100% CRI. It produces, it covers the entire spectrum perfectly. A, an uh, energy saver bulb, according to the uh, website of the ones I was using at the time, the f just a Philips standard household bulb, has, uh, had these ones had a CRI of um, 81%. Now, photography bulbs might be a little higher than that. Might be They're probably better. They're probably like 90 95%. But it's worth looking at. Because if you take a look at these two images that we've got here on the screen, um, the bulbs in this case were actually set to... Uh, to uh, They're actually rated at 2700 Kelvin. So I need to adjust both these images. But let's just take a look at the two images to start with. Here's the first one. This was taken with the tungsten bulbs. And this is the same image exactly the same no changes made to the camera settings whatsoever apart from exposure and the exposure is slightly different on both these images so i might just match that up let me just increase the exposure on this to kind of match it up to the other one no changes made whatsoever they're both actually shot both the bulbs are rated at 2700 kelvin so in fact we're going to ch make it, that change to these images and here Okay, so if you compare these two now, you'll notice that the colours on this one, I mean, obviously you haven't seen what the actual room looks like, but the colours on this one are a lot more natural. They're a lot more, the whites are more sort of, as you would expect, and the whites and creams are more as you would expect them to be. The reason I took a picture of this toy is because it's got a lot of bold sort of colours in it, and a lot of kind of RG reds, reds and greens and blues in there. And the colours on this, everything's got a very green greenish cast over it which really 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 impacts the image and I was quite shocked actually about how much difference it made just switching between those bulbs 
Okay, so with photography, we're shooting in RAW here, which is great because we can make a lot of adjustments at this stage to correct that and get it to look something like this. But if you're shooting video, you don't have that same level of adjustment available to you. Depends what camera you're shooting on, depends what codec you're using. However, you're still putting this into a codec and unless you're shooting RAW uh, in video, then you're not gonna have the same ability to adjust the file later. So let's see what we can do with this. Let's just pick a pick a white. Say we want that as our white and try and make it look something close. Um, maybe a little bit more saturation and change the temperature. We can just change the temperature slightly on this to bring it up. So we now we've now got something looks similar, but if we zoom into these bricks here, you'll notice still that the colours, the actual reds here, here we've got a lovely rich red and everything's very much, very much exactly as it looks. I mean, I know what these blocks look like, so in daylight anyway and here see again we've got this cast this green cast on it so let's try and get rid of this green cast. but the more we you see it's a push bit of a push pull affair here where we have to just one thing but then if we push the tint over to that side we start having impacts elsewhere so if we put the color temperature up then we start if something else starts to suffer so that's yeah it's a bit that's a bit brighter so let's try and adjust this here Bring that one up. So that's looking pretty close now. Fine, for photography work. You know, you can make all those adjustments later. But the point of this really was to sort of, well, if you're going to shoot video, think about the bulbs you're using and do try and get something that's really high on that CRI rating because it does make a big difference. And um, I've actually replaced a lot of the bulbs because, because a lot of the stuff I'm doing is just family stuff you know if you're shooting pictures of your family or um, your kids or something like that then uh, you might be doing a lot of photography around the house and uh, at different times of uh, day it's not always daylight stuff so I've actually changed a lot of the bulbs to uh, back to tungsten bulbs um, they're not tungsten they're eco halogens so energy is better but my better my better advice would be to only use them when you need to turn them off when you don't when you're uh, when you're not using them so anyway, I hope that gives you a good idea, a bit of an introduction to CRI if it's not something you've thought about before. So next time, if you're looking at your bulbs, make a sort of consideration as to what uh, rating they get and, um, and maybe it's worth paying just a little bit more to, uh, to have higher rated bulbs that uh, reproduce colours in a faithful and accurate way.